Well, here we are with our next video lab. The lab we're doing today is lab number 35, using Redox to determine an unknown, which is on page 37 of your lab book. Now, one of the things that you should have gotten from the last lab we did on reduction oxidation reactions is that you can predict if a redox reaction is going to occur by using Table J activity series. These metals right here. And the way it's supposed to work is the ion has to be below the solid metal. That's what you should have learned from last time. So, for example, if I had given you lithium ions and you put it into, a, I'm sorry, lithium ions and you put a piece of potassium into lithium ions, should redox occur? Well, since the solid metal has to be better than the metal in solution so that this guy can give electrons to this guy, we want the electrons to go that way. And that way means going down the table. Potassium is here trying to give electrons to lithium. That's not going to work. That won't be redox. If I try to take a piece of barium and put it in calcium plus 2 solution, I want the barium, the solid metal, to give electrons to the ion. Since barium is here and calcium is here, that's going to work. So yes, we will see a redox reaction occurring here. Well, we're going to use this idea that you can look at table J and determine what will undergo redox with what else. And we're going to try to identify an unknown metal based on this. Now we're going to use solutions of copper nitrate, zinc nitrate, silver, nickel, and lead. Now this is in bold because last time we used 0.1 molar lead, and now we're using much more concentrated 0.5 molar lead, which... I don't think you guys have to worry about because I'm the guy playing with the chemicals. Here's the fun part of this lab. Look at the procedure. Nothing's there. All you're going to do is write down what happens. Write down the procedure. It's very simple. It's almost identical to the last lab. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a solid unknown. I don't know what this is. And we're going to put them in the different solutions. We're going to put them in copper nitrate zinc nitrate, nickel, silver, lead. And we're going to write down whether or not we see a reaction occurring. The other part of the lab is we're going to interpret what we saw. What we're going to do now is write down from tube 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. You're going to write down which was the more active metal. Did the unknown give electrons to the metal in solution? If it did, let's pretend it did. Let's pretend that uh, when we put the unknown in copper, we saw a reaction. The more active metal would be the unknown, and the less reactive would be copper plus 2. If the reaction didn't occur with the copper solution, we would say that the copper plus 2 is more reactive than the unknown is less reactive. So what you're going to do is you're going to write down which metal is more reactive, the unknown or the metal in solution. And from this information, we should be able to use table J to figure out which element we have, which unknown we have. The unknown is on table J. And you should, through a process of elimination, be able to figure out which unknown it is. And that's what your conclusion is going to be. Using table J, determine the identity of the unknown metal. I think the unknown metal is this. And then explain why the elements, which elements are reduced and which elements are oxidized according to the chart. So, for example, if this reaction did run, then the cop, then the unknown would have been oxidized and the copper would have been reduced. And that's what you're going to do is go through a series of things and saying the unknown uh, oxidized and this one was reduced, this is oxidized, this is reduced. And from that evidence, you should be able to pinpoint specifically which unknown it is and why it can't be any other metal listed on table J. Okay? So, 
Let's take a look at the lab itself. So here we go. We're doing lab number 35 using Redox to determine an unknown. What you see we've got here is one, two, three, four, five, six test tubes all labeled. Eventually, I will start the lab. There we go. Now we're starting the lab. Okay, so there is my lead nitrate that I'm putting into tube number one. That says lead on there. And then I'm going to add zinc nitrate, that's pretty obvious, to tube number two. And I'm going to be add copper nitrate, my pretty blue solution, to tube number three. And we're using about a half a drop of fluid. That's about uh, two to three milliliters of solution. For those of you writing up the procedure. Here's a new one, nickel. Look at the green color. It's also a transition element. The nickel nitrate, nickel plus two ions, are going in tube number four. Now, there's my silver nitrate in tube number five. And then I'm adding one more. I'm adding magnesium nitrate. So I actually have six here. So you can actually add the sixth tube on here and the results from the sixth tube because it's actually quite simple. We're adding the same amount of liquid to each one. Now we're adding our own, our unknown. See it? Huh? Shiny, silvery metal, just like practically every other metal on the periodic table. We'll put a little bit in there, and of course, we'll spill some off to the side. We'll put some in there. Get that piece. Yeah, there we go. Put some in there. Just a nice, visible sized piece. That's kind of a little one there, but that's good. And we'll put a big old piece in there. And one more piece in there. Okay. Now, we're going to wait a little while. Ten minutes later, here's what we've got. That's what tube one looks like. Remember, it was a clear liquid with a silver piece of metal in it. So, describe what you think's going on there. Tube number two, clear liquid with a silver piece of metal in it. Describe what you think, or what you think is not going on there. This is blue. Now, that was a clear blue liquid with a silver piece of metal in there. If that's a clear blue liquid, then nothing happened. If it's not a clear blue liquid, something happened. This was a clear green liquid with a silver piece in the bottom. This again was a clear liquid with a silvery piece in the bottom. And this, of course, was the same thing. A silvery piece of metal. The little black thing is actually a shadow on the end. Now it's time for cleanup. So that's it. There's our whole lab. Again, you're going to be writing down the procedure. What did you see me do? Again, the volume I used was about 2 milliliters of the various liquids. Don't forget, I also added magnesium nitrate in here. So you can add magnesium nitrate. And the uh, online sheet's going to have a space for a sixth one. And it's going to have a space for the sixth one on the back as well. Well, the six liquids. And all six ions and the unknown metal if you use that table j that by the way is found in the back of your lab book there's table g and there's the table j i was referring to before you can use that to figure out what the unknown is so if you think this is going to be a fairly straightforward lab with a short procedure right up you are correct if you think this is very difficult and tricky you should contact me because it's not